All right, guys, we're in Americana, Sao Paulo, Brazil, a place founded in part by Confederates from the United States of America or the Confederate States of America, depending on how you want to look at it. Unfortunately, right here, the Museum of Immigration talking about the Confederate immigration as well as other waves of migration is closed right now. But our host, Joe, is gonna ensure we have a wonderful day here in the home of Confederate America. And if we don't, blame him. If this video stinks, blame him. Uh, okay, so Just fair. kidding, blame us. Blame We Justin. came here during Christmas. That's why- Natal, I'm... some may say. It's Friday, like two days before Christmas, and yeah. Well, we've officially gotten onto the grounds of the Confederate Cemetery here out just outside of Americana. It was a very, uh, it was a long drive and a lot of dirt roads and gravel roads. They have it very much away from the city areas. Yeah. The highway is close, but it, it doesn't connect straight to the highway at all. And thematically, it is surrounded by fields, um, farm fields. So the thing that these guys came out here to do, to be simple farmers, they're out here, Perkins right there, there's my name. Ah, uh, here we are at a Confederate monument here in Brazil with the name Perkins. Yep. Wow. Really cool. So a little history about this place. These guys started coming here in uh, 1866 after the Confederates lost the Civil War. The Confederates that didn't want to live in America anymore, they came down here in the state of Sao Paulo to basically do exactly what they were doing in America. The emperor at the time of Portugal and Brazil uh, was a big supporter of the South in the Civil War. So he made immigration here and citizenship path very easy for Confederates. They came down here and they started uh, cotton plantations. They even brought slaves with them, some of them. Uh, and they just basically kept doing what they were doing in the South here for another couple of decades. Uh, and from that, actually, a big textile mill came to Americana later on. So first the cotton industry and then German immigrants and a textile mill popped up in Americana as well. So and kind of uh, tying everything back together to Joe here, who's actually Irish. <laughs> on this side, there's a whole bunch of Irish names. So it would have been a lot of Irish confederados down here. Yeah. Mick Alpine, Mick Fadden, Mick McIntyre. McKnight, McMullen. If you don't, Mc, McIntyre. McIntyre. If you Mc don't, McIntyre. Reba? Reba's family <laughs> came down. If you don't know about the Irish presence in the Confederacy, please go see Kelly's Irish Brigade. It's a, it's a good song. Very interesting. I love the history. I, you know, actually, we might as well talk about it now. It's actually, the Confederate flag here is a big controversy just like it is in the united states people are calling it racist here it's actually because of americans though it's actually uh americans kind of imposing the bad taste of this flag specific the battle flag of the army of northern virginia uh that's being imposed into brazilian culture by americans i'll go ahead and throw up the coat of arms right here of uh the city of Americana, and it has the Confederate flag, the old coat of arms. I think they got rid of it. They did. And, uh, but yeah, I think it's important to preserve your, your heritage. I, I get that we're living in new times, but we gotta look it, back at history and understand what happened. Yeah, it, there's no point to go to France and tear down every statue to every king because the kings had servants and slaves and sent people to die in wars, you know? Yeah. Uh, that, History isn't always nice and clean. There's messy parts. It's just your heritage. It's better to look back and remember bad things than to forget and repeat. Also, I'll say this, when you strip away all the you know, things that we would consider morally reprehensible by today's standards, all you're left with is today's culture and nothing from the past. So like, you know, capitalist materialism, you know? And that's just not interesting. It's, it leaves like a hollow shell of a society. You need the, the history and the depth and the culture. So also here at the side of this cemetery was the first uh, Baptist 
church in the region, which is probably this church right here. Uh, it, Baptist, the Baptist sect of Christianity is the most common throughout the entire southern United States. Anywhere that is culturally southern is also predominantly Baptist. You can uh, look up the borders. Actually, he's going to put in the borders of the Bible Belt, and it will very much outline the Confederacy. So put up the Bible Belt here, Confederacy here, show the people. Very much overlapping in terms of cultural and cultural identity. So this came with them. It's cool seeing Southern culture all the way down here in Brazil, but we are way down south of Dixie, so. But you certainly are. I, uh, I was raised Baptist, so it is something I'm very ingratiated in. Here's a monument to 150 years with the Confederate and American flag. Unfortunately, right now, it looks like the church is in a state of disrepair. I guess the, uh, it's not, it doesn't get very much attendance. I know Catholicism is a lot bigger here. Actually, something I learned on this trip, I think a lot of people won't know, about 30% of Brazil is now evangelical Christian, which is a Protestant denomination. And growing very quickly. Yeah. So I think that's cool to see as a Protestant. I like that. I know a lot of you Catholics might not, but... You can blame Pope Francis, really. Yeah. This is the inside of the Baptist church. It would have been very humble because unlike other uh, sects of Christianity, like the Anglicans, like Catholics, like Orthodox, who very much have all these symbols and idols that they uh, pray to and have around their churches, in the Baptist faith, it is about being very simple, very humble, and communing with God directly. That's the idea. Yep. So right now, obviously, it's not at its best condition ever because it's probably not used as the church anymore. It's just a historical place. But it would not be probably very dissimilar to how it would have looked. I would even say that there's a certain beauty in its simplicity. Certainly. Here we have James Anderson. He is originally from Alabama, Franklin County. He almost certainly would have served in the Confederate Army, born in the year of... 1847. 1847, and he died 1876 here in Brazil. Fought for the Confederacy almost certainly. Moved down here. Started this beautiful area, which is now extremely agricultural. And this man, he was esteemed by all who knew him as an honest man. A man who came down here, he wanted nothing but a simple life in the agricultural business, and that's what he did. So this is the grave of the first person who was buried in this graveyard, Miss Beatrice Oliver, and she was born in the year 1827. She came down here and died in, nine, in 1868. So only three years after the end of the Civil War, she was buried here. That's how old this graveyard is for the Confederados. So here we have Joseph E. Whitaker. He was actually, it says right here on his grave, a Confederate veteran. So there's no speculation on it. This man served and fought in the Confederate Army. And now him and his family rest here in the grounds of Brazil. So the caretaker of the cemetery told me that this guy here uh, owned the land of the cemetery. And um, that's how they started the cemetery here. Uh, and that's his wife. So they, they were both... Uh, buried here in the end. And he was actually a colonel in the Confederate Army. So this graveyard is really spectacular. The thing about this place, I don't think we're going to meet very many actual Confederados here because of their population being so relatively small compared to the size of the cities. There is... Also, they've, they've just mixed in with yeah, so many exactly. other peoples. Brazil is a blend of peoples from everywhere, especially in Southern Europe. And they've just mixed so much that there's pretty much no cultural identity related to the motherlands. And it's very much a unique Brazilian identity that's formed here in this tropical environment. So realistically, we could pass a, a, a confederado. We could have passed one already on the street and not even known just by looking at them. Uh, they might not necessarily look American. They've been in this area for a hundred years now plus. Also, uh, 
there is there is a uh, festival that they do once a year here at the cemetery we're, we're not here at the right time but that would be the ideal time to try to actually talk to some of these people which i think would have been really interesting i would still love to do that and someday come from all over the world yeah people come from all over the world like we would if we came here to video the uh, festival i would love to do that while it's still going on so right here behind me is a flag of the city of americana and you can't see the flag right now. I'll put it up right here, the full thing, so you can see it. But the old crest was this right here. And it had the Confederate flag on it, but they took it down because people complained, saying it was racist, so they got rid of it. Tell us in the comments down below what you think of that. Do you think that was valid or no? Calling you from Miami, here in America, not Brazil. So right behind me, right here, is the Sao Paulo state flag, which here in Americana is especially interesting because it appears as if their state flag is modeled on the American flag. Insert full screen flag here. So yeah, Americana, it's double American here, double American theme. Also, look at this cool tree. That's really cool. I like it. You know who would really love it? Peter. Shout out to all the Peter files out there. Yeah, to all the Peter files in the audience. Let us know down in the comment how strong you guys are, the Peter file army. And we aren't talking about the guys from uh, Miracle Village. If you're a Peter file, type in the comments, hail Peter. And there's this enormous, beautiful, I assume Italian style, but maybe Portuguese style. Catholic Cathedral, I believe. It's big enough to be a cathedral that we're gonna go and check out right now. This thing looks awesome. Let's get in there. Let me just read out the name real quick. Santo Antonio Hujo Civicatos. I can't, I can't read Latin. Civitis Patrono. All right, together we complete it. That's right. This is nice. Saint Anthony something. Saint Anthony. I don't know what is the patron saint of. The patron, the patron saint of Hoojus. Eggs. Shout out all my Hoojus out there. We are inside and it is immaculate. It's extremely beautiful. But you know what guys? You've heard me talk about cathedrals all over the world. You've heard me give my opinion. You've heard me say that they're beautiful, that they look nice. Let's hear what Joe has to say as a native Braziliano. So, um, I... Louder Joe. When I travel, I usually like to go to churches. Uh, this is actually very interesting to see this type of church here in Brazil. It is not common at all. Um, yeah, there's a lot of details everywhere. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm impressed actually. I'll say this, I might be hyping it up in my mind a little bit, but for some reason, I find this church particularly striking and in my mind, and I could be wrong, tell me in the comments, I think this one's on par with like the ones in the square in Mexico City. Like it's not as big, but I think it's really, really intricate and beautiful in here. Like I think it's really one of the best churches I've ever been in. He's been to the Vatican though. Yeah, I was gonna, I thought he was gonna do his recency bias thing, but he, he refrained. I don't know if I moderated him. I mentioned it a lot, the recency <laughs> bias thing. But yeah, it is, it is a really nice church. It is genuinely, I think, on the level of the average church in like Italy even. Like obviously not the specifically grand ones like in the Vatican or in uh, Bologna. Yeah. <laughs> no, in Florence. It's not as good as the one in Florence or the one in the Vatican. But obviously those are like exceptional. Those are very much stand above the rest. This is a very beautiful one that I really, really like. I could certainly say this is the most beautiful church I've seen in Brazil. Yeah, certainly That's is. Easy. That's an easy one, which is weird because we went to one that should hypothetically be better and you know, nicer because it's in Junjai, which is a bigger city than Americana, I believe. Um, but here we are, this one's nicer. So here on the roof, something I found particularly striking was this rendition of Cain and Abel. Cain striking down Abel because he was in God's favor 
and Cain was not because because Abel's sacrifice was better than Cain's. Cain was jealous. He, uh, he struck down his own brother, this, both, both the sons of Adam and Eve. Pride, pride is man's greatest sin. Speak your truth. I speak my truth. So this town here um, is a very typical Sao Paulo countryside town because you have a mix of buildings like like this one here um, sort of tall and houses um, so things like that um, and people really like to drive around even though it's like a small place but we have a huge car culture here um, and it's very hot as well so I suppose that's why people like to drive around um, and it's pretty chill pretty calm this uh, town specifically is very, uh, very interesting. Um, but that's very typical of uh, Sao Paulo in general. Did you know about the Confederados before we told you about them? No. Like, being from here, like I, I've always uh, heard the name of Americana, the city, and like I know people from, from the city, uh, but I never, uh, thought that that was like something uh, related to the US. You Watch out for your hands on the camera. Sorry. I am not the YouTuber here. No, it's okay. I just want everything you're saying because it's all gold. I want it all to go in the video. Uh, okay, right. Uh, so we don't really have that, uh, that idea here. It's funny because like apparently this region of the country, but specifically this region of Sao Paulo state, was uh, uh, sort of we received a lot of people from other countries such as Ukraine and the US too and uh, Netherlands. Italy, Netherlands as well yes yeah. so uh, some of the history was kept but honestly that was like long a long time ago like more than a century ago and so I think that people just sort of became Brazilians I think you know like so some of the culture kind of was kept but it's um, much like in America, yeah, where they all Americanize, but there's still some glimpses of the past. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't even think that people here would identify as something other than Brazilian. Well, Justin, you can lead the way. Well, they have this pillar here to commemorate 100 years of American immigration to Americana. And it has a bunch of the names of the families who came here, probably a lot of the same ones that were in the old graveyard pillar, maybe all the same ones. Uh, unfortunately, this has been left to rot and it's been graffitied on quite a bit, but it was a nice thought when it was built here in Americana. Do you have any final words? Nope, that's gonna be it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. There is the festival, like we said, so come here in April, and on that note, have a wonderful day.